Welcome to IT Partshala. This video is the fourth part of HTML module. Before you continue, you should have basic understanding of HTML. If you want to study HTML first, please visit our video library at www.itpartshala.com. In this video, we shall show you how to implement CSS into your website. We shall also discuss the CSS syntax, advantages of CSS and how to create an external style sheet and link it with your HTML page. What is CSS? CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. CSS is an extension to basic HTML that allows you to style your web pages. With CSS, designers and users can create custom style sheets elsewhere and apply them to a web page. CSS handles the look and feel part of a web page. Using CSS, you can control the color of the text, the style of fonts, the spacing between paragraphs, how columns are sized and laid out what background images or colors are used, as well as a variety of other effects. For example, when we first learn HTML, we are taught to set the font face, size, color, styles, etc. Every time it occurs on a page, we find ourselves typing or copying and pasting the same thing over and over again. With CSS, you only have to specify these details once for any element and CSS then automatically applies the specified styles whenever that element occurs on the page. Advantages of CSS CSS saves time. You can write CSS once and then reuse same sheet in multiple HTML pages. You can define a style for each HTML element and apply it to as many web pages as you want. Pages load faster. If you are using CSS, you do not need to write HTML tag attributes every time. Just write one CSS rule of a tag and apply to all the occurrences of that tag. Less code means faster download times. Easy maintenance. To make a global change, simply change the style and all elements in all the web pages will be updated automatically. Superior styles to HTML. CSS has a much wider array of attributes than HTML, so you can give far better look to your HTML pages in comparison of HTML attributes. Multiple device compatibility. Style sheets allow content to be optimized for more than one type of device. By using the same HTML document, different versions of a website can be presented for handheld devices such as PDAs, mobile phones or for printing. Global Web Standards. Now HTML attributes are being deprecated and it is being recommended to use CSS. So it is a good idea to start using CSS in all the HTML pages to make them compatible to future browsers. CSS Syntax. A CSS rule has two main parts, a selector and one or more declarations. Selector. The selector is normally the HTML element you want to style. This could be any tag like H1 or table, etc. Declaration. Each declaration consists of a property and a value. Property. A property is a type of attribute of HTML tag. Put simply, all the HTML attributes are converted into CSS properties. They could be color or border, etc. Value. Values are assigned to properties. For example, color property can have value either red or blue. A CSS declaration always ends with a semicolon and declaration groups are surrounded by curly brackets. You can define a table border as given below. Here table is a selector and border is a property and given value 1 pixel solid hash COO is the value of that property. Ok, so you have now learned about the CSS syntax. But how do you incorporate this syntax into your website? Let us explore more. Implementing CSS. There are four ways of implementing CSS. Inline CSS, Embedded CSS, External CSS, Imported CSS. Inline CSS. Inline CSS is a term that refers to style sheet information being applied to the current element. It means that instead of defining the style once and then applying the style against all instances of an element, you only apply the style to the instance you want the style to be applied to. This way, you simply place the CSS code within the opening head and closing head tags of each HTML file you want to style with the CSS. For example,
External CSS. An external style sheet is a separate file where you can declare all the styles that you want to use throughout your website. You then link the external style sheet to all your HTML pages. This way, you only need to set the styles for each element once. If you want to update the style of your website, you only need to do it in one place. For example, type the following code into a plain text file and save with a .css extension. Imported CSS. You can use the Etheret import rule to import rules from other style sheets. Add either of the following codes between the opening head and closing head tags of all HTML documents that you want to import a style sheet into. CSS IDs. IDs allow you to assign a unique identifier to an HTML element. This allows you to define a style that can only be used by the element you assign the ID to. The ID selector uses the ID attribute of the HTML element and is defined with the hash symbol. For example, as shown in the following code, the style rule below will be applied to the element with ID para1. CSS class. The class selector is used to specify a style for a group of elements. Unlike the ID selector, the class selector is most often used on several elements. This allows you to set a particular style for many HTML elements with the same class. The class selector uses the HTML class attribute and is defined with a dot. In the example below, all HTML elements with class equals to center will be center aligned. You can also specify that only specific HTML elements should be affected by a class. In the example below, all P elements with class equals to center will be center aligned. CSS font CSS font properties let you change the look of your text. For example, you can assign a font family, change size, apply bold or italic formatting and more. CSS font family. The font family property allows you to set the font family. In CSS, there are two types of font family names. Generic family. A group of font families with a similar look like serif or monospace. Font family. A specific font family like Times New Roman or Arial. Setting the font family. The font family of a text is set with the font family property. The font family property should hold several font names as a fallback system. If the browser does not support the first font, it tries the next font. Start with the font you want and end with a generic family to let the browser pick up a similar font in the generic family if no other fonts are available. If the name of a font family is more than one word, it must be in quotation marks like font family times new roman. More than one font family is specified in a comma separated list. Font style. The font style property is mostly used to specify italic text. This property has three values. Normal. The text is shown normally. Italic. The text is shown in italics. Oblique. The text is leaning. Oblique is very similar to Telic but less supported. Let us look at an example to understand it.
font size. The font size property sets the size of the text. However, never use font size adjustments to make paragraphs look like headings or headings look like paragraphs. Always use the proper HTML tags like H1 to H6 for headings and paragraph tag for paragraphs. The font size value can be an absolute or relative size. Absolute size sets the text to a specified size, does not allow a user to change the text size in all browsers, which is bad for accessibility reasons. Absolute size is useful when the physical size of the output is known. Relative size sets the size relative to surrounding elements, allows a user to change the text size in browsers. If you do not specify a font size, the default size for normal text like paragraphs is 16 pixels. Let us look at an example to understand it. Setting font size with M. To avoid the resizing problems with older versions of Internet Explorer, many developers use M instead of pixels. The M size unit is recommended by the W3C. The default text size in browsers is 16 pixels. So the default size of 1M is 16 pixels. Let us look at an example to understand it. using a combination of percent and m. The solution that works in all browsers is to set a default font size in percent for the body percent. Let us look at an example to understand it. CSS font stretch. This property relies on the user's computer to have an expanded or condensed version of the font being used. Let us look at an example to understand it. CSS font style. The font style property is used for specifying italic text in CSS. Let us look at an example to understand it. CSS font variant. CSS font variant lets you set your text to use small caps. Let us look at an example to understand it. CSS font weight. This property lets you set your text to bold. Let us look at an example to understand it. CSS font property. The font property is a shorthand property that enables you to set all font properties in one go. Look at the following example carefully. CSS text. In CSS, text can be styled using the CSS text properties. 
In this lesson, you will learn how to use each CSS text property and how does it look like in a browser. Text color. The color property is used to set the color of the text. Let us look at an example to understand it. Text alignment. The text align property is used to set the horizontal alignment of a text. Text can be centered or aligned to the left or right or justified. When text align is set to justify, each line is stretched so that every line has equal width and the left and right margins are straight as you may have seen in magazines and newspapers. Let us look at an example to understand it. Text decoration. The text decoration property is used to set or remove decorations from text. The text decoration property is mostly used to remove underlines from links for design purposes. Let us look at an example to understand it. Text transformation. The text transform property is used to specify uppercase and lowercase letters in a text. It can be used to turn everything into uppercase or lowercase letters or capitalize the first letter of each word. Let us look at an example to understand it. Text indentation. The text indentation property is used to specify the indentation of the first line of a text. Let us look at an example to understand it. Fourth part of our HTML module ends here. In this video, we discuss the different ways to style text of a web page using CSS and how to implement CSS into your website.